our trial, and this is our second trial of the fiber mat versus soil um, experiments, uh, is now ready to be uncovered. This is uh, after three days of growth. And uh, on the left here is our fiber mats, and on the right here is our soil. So I'm going to bring you in a little bit closer here so you can watch as I uncover and we can see our initial results and see how things have changed in our new setup. All right, so on the left here, fiber mats where we have four different, well, there'll be no difference at this point, hopefully. There'll still be four different treatments here. So this is, this is exactly what I want to see when I uncover my wheatgrass after three days of growth. This is almost exactly the size I want to see. Um, I probably could have taken the weight off last night um, to not have things so flat, but this will recover really nicely. So we're seeing pretty uniform growth between the formats, which, which is great. And then we're going to give them different fertilizer treatments while they're growing. And then our soil. And our soil is actually, and I had noticed this a bit while growing, Actually, it's just a little bit here, but I, I'd almost say our soil is a little bit further behind than our growing mats here. So, which is the exact opposite of what we were expecting. Uh, and one of the factors might be uh, the different amount of warmth that each crop is getting. Now the soil, uh, I prepared it, um, I, I, I prepared the, the tray outside and it's quite cold, brought it in. Uh, while the seed was soaking and sowed onto that. And so the seed was sowed onto fairly cold soil. And even though there's a heating pad under there, it would have taken quite a while for that heating pad to bring the soil up to temperature. So that could be a factor. Uh, even though I did water with warm water to bring the temperature up, it still wouldn't have come up that much just because of the mass. Whereas the um, fiber mats were uh, you know, already at room temperature and also getting watered with warm water. So I had a little bit of an advantage that way. Um, but this is actually kind of the result I also want to see considering the first trial uh, showed that we were getting much, uh, well, that generally that the, the fiber mat growth was slower than it was in soil. Now we didn't do a side-by-side -side comparison there. I was just drawing from experience. And we ended up harvesting on day 10, which is, uh, you know, not the case here. This should be on day seven or eight. So let's see what happens here. So the other thing I want to look at, there, there's really no more looking at aspects of this tray because we can't. All the roots are in the soil and they're kind of hidden. But this tray here, if you remember, it's upside down. And this is our paper pot tray. And so we're actually growing the mat growing with the mat on top of the bottom of the tray. Uh, and I'm really kind of excited about this. One, because I have never seen anybody talk about doing it this way. And two, you know, there's this, this space here now. So we do see the roots coming through a little bit here. Let's see how much you can see. I can see you can't see that very well, so I'm gonna readjust this so you can see better. All right, so now we're a little more on there. So if we go here, now you can see this first uh, mat is growing through pretty nicely, but the other one's actually in the, a little bit at the back, but the middle is not. So this again, so when I feel this, I can feel it's much warmer in the middle than it is on the end. So we are seeing some uh, stunted root growth due to the heat mat. Well, this is my assumption. Now, what we are not seeing is stunted growth and germination. So like the, the these middle ones actually look about as good as as the um, as the uh, the outer ones. So even though it's warmer in the middle uh, and it, it, we are seeing less root growth coming through in the middle. I'll show you that there again. So you can see here on the outside, we've got some really good growth coming through there. And these will probably be able to reach right down to the bottom by today. These ones here are not, they're just barely poking through. Now, there might be better root growth up on the surface up here, but I don't really see an indicator there. 
So uh, what I'm going to do, and I had thought about this, and it's another reason why it's nice to have this up higher, is I'm going to put a, a good amount of water in the tray below now. And so what that's going to do is it's going to, that's going to cause the heat to, to dissipate uh, more naturally uh, to even out on the tray. And it's going to take some of that heat away. That heat now is going to be so concentrated in this, this middle area, it's going to be spread out more, which means it's going to bring that level of heat down a bit. Um, now for this, for the germination, the heat was on 24 hours a day. So we had heat literally for the last three days. Now that the lights are on, the heat will only come on when the lights are on, which means at night, the, the soil or the growing mat or either will cool down a little and then it'll warm up a bit in the day and then it'll cool down at night. And for the germination stage, it wasn't doing that. It was warm all the time. And that's just because my lights and my heat mat are just on one power bar. So for the first three days, I just unplugged the lights and now I'm going to keep those all together. Now, of course, I could have those on two different power bars, one at a timer and one not. Um, but I don't think there's a problem with cold nights. Um, it, it's more of a natural growth cycle. Though, as I've talked about in the past, uh, one way to speed up a, a crop growing cycle is by bringing up the temperature at nighttime. So instead of letting your nighttime temperature drop, keeping it more consistent, that'll, that'll be very significant in speeding up growth for most crops. So yeah, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna, um, I'm gonna give these both a little water at the sink. I'm going to make sure there's a, a much more water in the bottom of this tray so it's uh, evenly spread out. And then later today, I am going to give some fertilizer treatments to these. So this one here is going to be our control, our first one, with, uh, with no treatment whatsoever. This one here, I'm going to use a kelp, a liquid kelp meal that I have. And I'm just going to use a very light concentration on these. This one here, I'm going to do a compost fertilizer and I have to I'm not sure which compost I'm going to use because that will make a big difference. I do have some on site here, but I'm not particularly keen on it. Uh, um, and then the compost that I really like is just not as easily available right now. And in this one, I am going to use my, uh, diluted human urine. Yes, you heard me right. So um, I have been collecting and using urine in my garden for many years. And I would not do this for commercial microgreens production, but I do want to see uh, what, what it does in a situation like this. And what I would probably look at doing is, the, you know, two to three days of urine fertilization and then two to three days without uh, and, and make sure that I'm just watering well. And I'm not worried about any sort of contamination actually on, on a small personal scale, um, but it's just, you know, I don't want to be juicing, you know, wheatgrass with my urine on it basically. So I'll be really curious to see, and what we're trying to address here is, is growth, is, is growth speed, so we can get this down to a seven or eight day cycle like we've been seeing with our soil. Now, so this is the difference now. At germination, everything is, is about the same. They're fairly uh, familiar, both, both treatments here. Um, but now is when we might start to see some difference. Uh, I will try and set up a time lapse today. Um, I've, I've got the GoPro ready, so hopefully we can see that. And from the time lapse, we'll be able to see what the growth rate difference looks like. So we'll see if I can get that set up. And then we'll, we'll do like we did with the last trial, do some checking in uh, on a day by day basis to see what's happening and to point out any observations we're seeing. So this is our uncovering of our trial two, and I'm excited to be carrying this on. So we'll keep you updated on uh, what comes next.